Hello and welcome to the first episode of Meet the Materials. This is not my first YouTube video, but it's the first one I've prepared for and I feel very unprepared. And I don't even know where to start, but um, yes. This is uh, my intro. And this is the material we will be meeting today. It smells a bit like a sheep. And in fact, it is partially sheep's wool. Let's take a closer look. What do we see? We see fibers. They are white, but if we look close enough, do you see there's a bunch of white fibers? If I play with the light settings a bit, you can see there are these kind of white fibers and then there are these metallic fibers. So those white fibers are sheep wool and the grey metallic fibres are actually stainless steel um, shavings, almost, I would say. So this, and, and you can tell that there's more real wool in there than there are stainless steel shavings. You can also see when I manipulate the wool fibres are moving. So this is a, a blend, about 20% stainless steel fibers and 80% wool. Stainless steel fibers, you can kind of see, and I bet I could get, a, maybe I should even do that, get a, um, probably find some finer tweezers, but we could try to almost like tweezer out a single stainless steel fiber. I think I probably do it better with my fingers, these um, tweezers are, as you can see, um, not very good anymore. Let me try to pull uh, one out. Or we just even pull out a few, get them under the microscope. No, don't want to stay in focus. Anyway, I think you could trust me. Uh, they're about two, three centimeters long, these uh, stainless steel fibers. And this wool here is produced by a Belgium company called uh, Bekert, Bekayat. Um, they specialize in all kinds of steel products from steel rods, steel sheets, uh, but they also have a kind of a textile section where they sell this. Um, if you were coming from textile crafts, you would call this roving. It's kind of raw wool that you could use to felt or spin your own yarn with. Um, they're not necessarily selling it for being spun and knit, more maybe industrially felted uh, to create electromagnetic field shielding materials or anti-static materials. Um, they do also sell spun versions of this wool, as you can see here. This is a th rather thin one, um, but there are other companies who uh, manufacture thicker versions um, of a kind of very similar blend. Um, although uh, Bekart's nice because it's real wool blended with the steel fibers. Um, this is from Schella, an Austrian company. Uh, they don't sell this anymore unless you really ordered a huge quantity. Um, but yeah, this one's thicker. I'm holding it up to that camera. You can see it much better here, of course. So that's the Schella. That's the Bekart next to it, the thinner one. And then this 
it was a really nice product, although maybe you can kind of see in the close-up it's not so even. There are some kind of clumps of stainless steel in it. This was manufactured by um, a company called Plug and Wear. It wasn't actually manufactured by them. They commissioned it from a local Italian company that spun yarn and they gave them these mix of fibers and they spun it. This is also polyester, I believe. Um, but they've stopped. They, they sold out the batch they ordered and so now this stuff is harder to get in a thicker quality. But you can spin your own. All you need is a lid and a pencil and a hook. Um, I'll show that in another video. But what is so cool about this stuff? Um, maybe now is a good time to introduce this hat that I'm wearing. This is my wearable multimeter. Um, I have unplugged myself. But when I plug myself in, I hope that you can see this and then I probably have to restart my Yay, graph. So these are my two probes for my multimeter. If I touch my own skin, you see the resistance of my skin shows up as a less light. I did not get around to doing a very good mapping yet of my multimeter hat. Um, but steel is a metal. It conducts electricity. If I take a small piece of this and hook it up to my two probes, you will see my hat gets rather dim. And when I wiggle it around, my hat changes. And there's also a graph in one of the windows showing you basically the raw data of the electricity that is flowing through this material and getting from one end to the other. So if I squeeze it, the graph goes very low, meaning a lot of electricity is, can flow. Yeah, this is confusing. This is because of how I've wired it. I should wire it the other way so that when I squeeze it, it goes up. You have the feeling that there's more electricity flowing, throwing, flowing through it. Um, and when I totally disconnect it, you can see the graph goes to the top. Um, so these are the two extremes. Exactly. So why is that happening? Well, we saw, if you looked under the multimeter, uh, under the microscope, that the steel fibers are few, fewer than the wool, and distributed throughout the, the mess here. When I stretch or squeeze these fibers, the contact between those individual steel fibers improves, like literally, they'll be kind of lying there loosely next to each other. And if I stretch it a little bit, I'm just causing there to be a bit more kind of strain or you could call it pressure or improved contact between these tiny fibers. And the more contacts there are and the better these contacts are, the less resistance there is at that point of contact meaning that more electrons can flow, um, so it becomes more conductive, the overall kind of connection between the two points that I've clipped onto. So with this raw piece of wool, you can see from the signal there and from my hat flickering light, it's not the most robust, I'll say robust, reliable, repeatable um, kind of value we're getting, which is also very nice about these materials. Um, but what if I were to clip onto a um, spun version of these fibers, which is basically to spin it, you kind of pull off the fibers and you twist and you pull and you twist and you pull and you twist. And you do that with a spindle so that you can actually build up like an amount of yarn. So this is kind of the result of an industrial version of that pulling and spinning. You can look under the microscope and you can see the similar kind of fibers but they're kind of aligned uh, the, the ones sticking off it too and you can see that when it's relaxed the yarn is a bit thicker and when I stretch it it gets thinner when I relax it it kind of puffs up a bit and when I stretch it it gets thinner I need to focus that better but 
Right where you need both hands to do. Oh yeah, there's nice. So stretched and relaxed. Stretched and relaxed. So we see the same thing happening. Now what if I clip that onto my multimeter hat? We see very little light when it's relaxed. And when I stretch it, we see even less light. Okay, that's because I'm clipped very close together, so it's already very conductive. If I clip further apart, there's more resistance. So my hat shows resistance, not conductivity. So light is resistance. Resistance is light. And when I stretch it, it becomes more conductive, there's less light. But again, this is the range is not so great on this pretty short piece. And there's also quite a bit of like um, variability, even when I'm trying to hold it in a kind of stable position. You can see in the graph. So a next step up you can do with this yarn is it's, it's great. You can crochet it or you can knit it to create a kind of a fabric. And this is a knit on, it's not crochet, this is a crochet hook, this was knit on a spool knitter, which is a small little machine that you can even get ones that you can hand crank, and they spit out this kind of rope. So I knit this, um, and then I mounted it with a piece of elastic behind it, so that when I pull it, I have this nice kind of elasticy feel, and then when I relax it, the elastic kind of pulls the knit back into place. And I'll hook that up so you can see both the electrical and the fibrous properties at work at once. But now we can see the graph. See how nice, kind of when I stretch it smoothly, it kind of goes down relatively. And when I relax it, it goes up again. And now my lights on my hat are doing their job nicely. Okay, and now we can have a look under the microscope too. And you can see the, the knit is kind of also getting fatter when it's relaxed and getting thinner when it's stretched, like I'm stretching it. This is great, the setup. I should have built this for myself years ago. <laughs> okay, um, that's basically what I wanted to show you about this material. Um, what you see going on in the knit here is now you've got the individual kind of loose fibers in the fiber. Um, but then you've also got the... So before I was just pulling a single strand of it, it was kind of short. I would say there might be about two meters knit up in, or two or three meters of that yarn knit up in this uh, piece here. So I've increased the, the distance, but then also the way knitting works is you kind of loop in back on yourself. So it's also... Um, the resistance between to between the strands of the yarn touching itself so it's kind of within the yarn you've got the fibers c compacting because you're stretching them and then you've got a loop of yarn and a loop of yarn making better contact here between themselves because you're stretching it and then that's what the elastic does is it kind of pulls it back so it forces this loop to you stretched it, but then when you release it, it goes back. If you don't have that elastic, and I and I stretch that over time, it might not relax by itself again. Yeah, that was the end of this first episode. I have no idea how I'm actually going to publish this video. Um, next episode, I'm thinking maybe I'll introduce this Carl Grimm thread. Copper and I think a polyester core. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.